currently taking place in the country. Um, we have witnessed an exchange of uh, political statements, some coming from uh, what is referred to uh, a team that belongs to State House and uh, a team that is being seen, seen as outsiders. As we are seated here, three of us and many others, uh, without any doubt, we believe that we are being seen as some of these who are outsiders. Uh, the other day, the deputy or the vice chair of Jubilee, uh, Mr. Murade, he issued a statement through four media houses, which was widely covered. And in that statement, Murade suggested and said that come 2022, Kenyans must accept whether they like it or not to be led by the fifth president of Kenya, who is Raila Molo. He went ahead to narrate, so now Raila should be rewarded for many things that he has done to, uh, for this country. And they went ahead to say that the people of Mount Kenya, the people of Mount Kenya, they will be voting for the candidate that will be proposed by the Kenya. I wanted to respond to Brother's remark. So statement telling that he must get to know and understand that Kenyans are mature, they understand what is democracy, and they will never be forced by anyone or directed by anyone to vote against their choice. Uru himself is going home, and if Murada is not aware, Uru is finishing his term. And the election starting from uh, MC, MCRs up to presidential position for presidents will be decided by Kenyans. So that language is trying to use to come and say that uh, because uh, Raila did this or that. All of us in this country we have made a contribution towards the development of our country and also the second liberation of this country and the first liberation of this country in itself participate. So it is wrong to hear such a person like Morade who was defeated his own constituents before he left politics. And the lesson he was told by the electorate has never, never, at any given time, been rectified by Murada himself, or went back and got elected, even as an MCA. So that is toward Murada. The other thing that I want to touch on is to issue, to issue to do with the COVID-19 funds. And you press people, the other day, a few days ago, you printed it in capital letters in our newspapers that that money was stolen. And the money is kept somewhere outside this country. In other words, accounts in overseas countries. Press cannot say such a thing without evidence. So also we want the press in this country to go and print the names of the people who stole that money. 
and tell us where the money is kept. Because we want Kenyans to recover that money, as you say. The other day, we had even the government itself here saying that all their investigation being done, ESCC is pursuing those uh, culprits. We want to know how far they have gone for the government's case. And instead of the president, the team creating, you know, issue to divert Kenyan's attention from thinking on the theft that is taking place in the country, they are bringing policies of 2022. We will meet there. He's not alone. I want to tell Kenyans that Ruto is not alone. It's not even the way it's being reported that he has been isolated and left alone. Not at all. Here we are, and many others are there outside there. Let him want to dissolve the government and call for elections. And that is the time they will get to know how prepared Kenyans are for this coming election. <laughs> Thank you very much. I want to agree with uh, what uh, our brother said. I think so. But I want to remind Kenyans that uh, Francis Atwoli has consistently, for a long time, been asking us to take it to the bank. The fact that A, the Deputy President will not be a president and B, that he would not even be on the ballot paper. And he was saying that this is because he knows that they cannot allow. So who are these people if they are not the system, if they are not the big state, so to speak? Number two, David Murray as articulated by my brother yes. He has also spoken on the issue of deep state, saying, we have decided. Can you imagine one character from Katanga there saying that once he decides, he has decided for all Kenyans, including Kenyans from Old Town in Mombasa, Kenyans from the slopes of the hills in Machakos, Kenyans from the Kakamega uh, rainforest that they have decided if by saying we have decided rather therefore is referring to a deep state or a system you better say it. then finally Raela's brother Buru went public two weeks ago and said that they are finally going to go to state house because now the deep state is working for them we are sitting here to call bluff that there is nothing called deep state. As far as we are concerned, if deep state was there, Uhuru Kenyatta would have won the presidential election in 2002 because Moi was behind him. Number two, if the deep state was indeed there, then in 2005, President Kibaki would not have lost the referendum. If the deep state was there, then in 2013, Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto, who were facing a sitting vice president and a sitting prime minister as opponents for the presidential election, they would not have lost. I mean, they would not have won. They would have lost to a sitting vice president and a sitting prime minister. But because there was no deep state, they won them and won. Finally, if there was anything called the deep state, President Uhuru's and his deputy, Ruto's election in 2017, would not have been overturned by the Supreme Court because the deep state would not have accepted. So an attempt to use the word deep state, just as the deputy president said a few days ago, is an attempt to intimidate Kenyans to think that there is no power in voting. We will not allow it. We are standing with the Deputy President and saying that there is no deep state. That is just scaremongering to make Kenyans to accept a possible rigged election 
we are calling upon Kenyans that they can take away everything from you. They can take away money men to fight COVID for you. They can take away the money from your small businesses that have been your livelihoods. But there are two things they will not take away from you. Dear Kenyans, they will not take away your minds and they will not take away your ballot paper. You will exercise your mind by using the ballot paper and will replace the system, so-called, the deep state, so-called, with the leader that this republic is the leader. Finally, I see a nexus between the utterances of Jeanette Hamet and Mraze. I see a nexus between those utterances and the loss of hundreds of millions of shillings men to fight COVID-19. It is you people, good people of the media, who have informed us that money has been lost at Kemsa. We hear that some of the beneficiaries of those lost funds include Junaid Muhammad. They include Gladys Wanga. They include David Murade. And this is why, because Raila is the custodian of the power of princing thieves in this country, they had to offer him something that we are going to help you be president. Please protect us. We are your food soldiers. The money lost, whether through Junaid, whether through Gladys Wang, whether through Murade, whether through Rafael Tuju, as reported, in the grapevine will have to be accounted for. And it is not a small thing, by the way, because already the High Commission of the United Kingdom has spoken to this. Already the ambassador of Kenya has spoken to this. They are asking for full disclosure on how these funds are being we have information that is suggesting that some operatives in this criminal gang called the Deep State have actually been using some of the donations, for example, by Jack Moore of China, to, to supply to Kemsa in the pretext that they are supplying their own product, when actually those were donated facilities. We will not stop if a president can sit in his office and see no problem with the Mutai Kagwe saying that they have spent four million shillings making a thermos full of tea. If you can see nothing wrong with that, we beg him to realize that four million shillings can buy a lot of drugs for management of patients with COVID. Four million shillings can buy very many pets. Four million shillings can buy several ventilation machines to save the lives of the patients. Four million shillings cannot buy enough PPEs. It's a shame that they are spending money on tea and lack of PPEs is the reason why doctors and nurses are dying because they are not protected. So with due respect, for all the respect we give the guys in power, whether uh, the power that we know or in deep state, we owe it to the people who have died, that they come clean and arrest the pain. Okay. I think uh, all has been, all has been said by my two seniors here. Mine is to simply agree with both of them. <laughs> the whole idea about concocting this deep state theory or the existence of one is to get Kenyans dissuaded from exercising their right to vote and therefore sustain a succession plan that is intended to preserve the interests of those who have been in power for the last eight years. Whoever it's in public knowledge, through family, through friends, through cronies, 
have flooded this country in measures that have, have literally bankrupted our country and indebted it for the coming years to come, for a few years to come, for many years to come. So therefore, Kenyans must lose the fear. They must face on this courage to hide beyond, behind these paradigms, head on, and exercise in the next two years. Vigilance, activism, and finally reflect it in their vote to ensure that we secure our nation and secure our future and reign firm accountability on those who have embezzled this country. We have seen two transitions for those of us who are in my age bracket. We have forgiven both these transitions. We have overlooked the transgressions of uh, those players in, in Moise Dublin. We overlooked the transgressions of the Anglo Lisi upon Kibaki's exit, but we must punish impunity this time around, come 2022, to ensure that even the new government that comes in, people must realize governments do not profit people, impunity will be punished. So therefore, this uh, how, how is anybody, a nation of courage, being threatened? by Atwoli or Amurabe, people who, in my view, will easily feel it within the category of a spent force. We are, we are a nation of youth. How at one you feature, just because they can direct police at you. These are not men of courage. These are cowards. When you use a system to commit crimes, or you officialize your crimes, you're not courageous. You're simply a coward. So, that is one. So I think that's a debate that we have engaged in deliberately because we see Kenyans starting to fall into this theory that the deep state will tamper or influence the outcome of the election negatively despite their vote. Come out and vote, come out and defend the vote, come out and defend the transition when it comes. Number two is the issue of poverty. I think what is necessary first and foremost I think when those who are asked, who are saying we need to have full disclosure, full disclosure shall, must come from the investigative agencies. My good friend, uh, the DCI, has a reputation of conducting his investigations in the media. He should leak to you his preliminary findings, which are attached to partly to the, to the first family or its surrogates. We therefore demand that in the next seven days, that disclosure must be made, must be taken, and to facilitate a comprehensive investigation, KEMSA officials who presided over this COVID management of, of procurement must be compelled to step aside, including the accounting officers in the ministry, to facilitate a comprehensive and thorough investigation, in particular a forensic investigation. And I ask my brother, the DCI, my brother from the ESCC, to move with haste and speed and let us test their sincerity about <laughs> fighting corruption. We were told corruption was, was something that was synonymous with a certain individual in government. He has been pushed aside and we have seen the most reckless and wanton theft that can be imagined. Even in COVID, some families that have acclimatize themselves to making money, are still making money. How shameless can they be? So I think we are calling for this investigation. We are calling for this disclosure. And it must be time-bound if we are to restore the faith that there is really a process of COVID management that is sincere and transparent and addresses some of these concerns. And we're asking international partners, whereas we have fundamental love for our nation, but we also cannot allow an, a, a process of unjust enrichment. Whether it is the World Bank, whether it is the European community, whether it is the British government, whether it is the American government, must freeze or suspend funding of COVID programs unless disclosure is made in the next week or 14 days. And unless action is taken. And there should be heads rolling. You know, Kenyatta comes around talking tough, you know, on all matters. 
but he has led one of the most disastrous government. Those of us who are in our age brackets have ever, have ever witnessed. In fact, if I was to go by accounts of all other pe people who've lived in all the four governments, they would tell you without sheer shadow of doubt that this is the worst ever. Kenyans committed an agrarian crime to, to its future. It is a, it's now an opportunity in the next ten years, in the next two years, to remedy this crime. Crime where we have literally mortgaged and indebted our future and embezzled and personalized and private as a country. So therefore, I think on the issue of profit, it is very clear. We add our voices to all those who are calling for accountability and to tell Kenyatta, it is shame, shame on you for a country to be in a crisis and a pandemic and to have your surrogates and your partnerships and an ecosystem of those who are who, are, who bear patronage to you, uh, milking this country dry and uh, benefiting from COVID donations. So you have uh, raised a very important thing. The issue Senator Omar has raised is what do we do? Is it real? Because even as we speak now, these guys are taking away fast medical. We would like the international community to quickly readjust the module of funding so that the government is stopped completely from taking those funds. We start funding the programs of COVID through faith-based organizations, through community-based organizations, and other non-governmental organizations. Otherwise, the government doesn't appear to care. We even have the talk that a prominent member of the National Chamber of Commerce is the one who is actually the conduit of ensuring that the products that are brought in as a donation are then sold to Temsa. So this government is too, the impunity is too high, let us resort to the alternative, the traditional CDOs, FDOs, and NGOs. So, uh,